All right, guys, I don't care what business you're in. You have to learn how to manage people. A great leader, a great manager is going to be a person that follows some steps, some systems, some processes, so then that way their sales team isn't getting loose. I was born to be a fighter, had these dreams and desires. I would be something better than a G. So in order to be the best leader in the world, why don't we just write down step number one? Be earlier than your sales team. Show up there like where you're ready to go, where you have the day planned out, where they can see you mean business. You're welcoming them in. It leads me to number two. You're fired up, you're fist bumping them, you got the music cranking, you're excited to go for the day. They're like, man, today's gonna be a great day. Oh, you dang right it is, because Big Daddy Evan's here to make sure that we're gonna get this day going, we're gonna make some gross, we're gonna make some deals, people are buying, I'm excited, let's go. You gotta be one of these people that like, dude, you're a pep talker, you're a freaking leader, you're somebody that they gotta be able to run into battle with, you're somebody that you want them to run through a wall for you. Are they gonna run through a wall for somebody who's poopy pants and not motivated? It's like, oh, I had a long night at the bar, oh my my wife said this, uh, 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 uh. bro, cut it out. You can, you can either be a verbal viper, like you can literally spread cancer to your team and you don't realize in a sales team, you might say one thing negative about one person in the morning or something like that and it spreads to five of them. And now they're not selling at a high level because you weren't speaking life into people. Man, you're a salesperson. You're one of the best salespeople at that store. That's why you're the leader. So what you need to do is really sell your team. Sell, sell them on the day that they're gonna have. Sell them on the vision that they're gonna have. Sell them on the life that they're gonna have staying close to you over the next year, two years. Remember when you prayed to have a sales team that would follow you? Go look at your sales team right now. And truly, for real, ask yourself, is this the team that I prayed for? And if it's not the team that you prayed for, you need to look in the mirror and say, am I the leader that I once prayed for that I needed? Number three, morning training, man. Every single day I walk into the Lions Den, I'm always training my team. That might look like a formal training. That might, that might look like a sales meeting, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. My goal with morning trainings is also just to see people's eyes. I want to know if somebody's got something going on. The eyes are the window to the soul. I'm always looking at them while I'm training them and seeing if they look away, seeing what the belief looks like, seeing what their energy looks like. You as leaders need to get in front of your teams more. If you're having a sales meeting once every two weeks, once a month, something like that, dude, you're crazy. I think three times a week is very important. That leads me to number four, my one-on-ones. Listen, my one-on-ones don't need to be formal. They don't need to be like, hey, let's sit down and let's go over your exact training platform. Dude, listen, we can walk up to somebody. We can have a five, 10 minute meeting and be able to do a need analysis remember when you're selling like a discovery we can do that with them on the fly and be able to see exactly where they're at now I believe that a good sit down every month one-on-one -on -one is really important like it's really important you got to know what the heck is going on I also believe here's a good one-on-one -on -one. you should be having one-on-ones with the significant others if you really want to take your business to the next level and have an unrecruitable like badass sales team you got to know what's going on at home those people at home influence them more than anybody in the world it explains to them what we're doing down here we have a hero making machine down here. We're going to be pressing your husbands to be good guys here. And then when they go home, we need you guys to help them grow. So make sure that's a part of your culture. It's not weird. It's weird. In, in fact, in my book, not to, that's why we don't have turnover and you do because we get to know our people at such a deep level that we can find all their deepest insecurities, maybe some of their deepest secrets, things maybe they don't like, things maybe they really do like. We, and we can help them recreate their life. So they're super proud of where they're at, where they work and the team and the leaders that are around them. Do a little goal review. Actually, go over their goals. Go over a daily plan. Go over a plan. Hey, how many calls do you gotta make today? How many emails do you gotta send today? How many texts do you usually send? Do they know their plan? Or do they not have a plan and they're planning to fail? Can you make a couple calls with them on their hot list? Maybe you could call those people, show your salespeople how good you are, Big Daddy. And if you can close them in front of your salespeople, do you know how much momentum that brings to your store? You should do a save a deal every single day. That leads me to number five. Awareness for a leader is the biggest thing. I want you to write this down, awareness. Do you know who's on your showroom floor? Like, do you know Bobby's customer? Do you know their name? Do you know their kids? Do you know what they drove up in? You need to be looking at this. When's the last time I looked at my sales team? Where's my top producer at? How many test drives do we got on the floor right now? How many cars have we sold? Are we just busy and broke? Or are we busy and we're making money right now? What's my finance team looking like? How busy are they? What's their attitude look like? Do they need food? Do I need to send somebody to get food so we can all stay engaged? What I like to do and what I loved one of my general managers did back in the day was every two hours he would just make a quick run around the sales floor, a quick run around the showroom floor. Almost every single time he did that, he'd see somebody at a car or somebody looking at a car on the showroom floor. He would always go out and he would always take a second and walk around and go through service and he'd go through parts and he'd always find things because those guys are deep in the fight. It takes a good perspective from outside to be able to direct your team back into what they need to do. Number six, this is one of the most forgotten about things I think in the 
car business and really in any business. I went down and started training a wedding dress company in LA. I'd never sold wedding dresses, but what I quickly realized in being in their company for a couple of weeks and or a couple of days and consulting them, there was no manager engagement when somebody would walk through the door. A manager needs to get introduced early and often. We always had a rule in our store that your customer within two minutes of coming into the store, they had to meet one of the top salespeople, one of the top salespeople, one of the top closers, or they had to meet a manager. This was a non-negotiable. You could literally get thrown out of the dealership and sent home if somebody left the dealership and hadn't talked to one of your managers. Now, a lot of places, what they do, the salespeople are like, oh, you were so busy. I, like, I, I, I couldn't do anything. Like, I, 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 I didn't know where to, like, I didn't know what to do. Or I tried to intro them at the very end. As a salesperson, you have to have the anticipation and you need to, as leaders, need to coach your salespeople. You need to have the anticipation on if you're going to need help with this customer. If they're asking you challenging questions that you don't understand. Okay, and as the leader, remember how I said you had to look up in step five, you have to look around. You should know if somebody's walking through the door. There's nothing more important than sales. I, I know you're getting deals bought and doing all this stuff and admin and this and this and receptionist is doing this and this. Dude, chill for a second. Take a step back, slide your seat out, slide your chair out, go talk to that customer. Hey, don't do it creepy. Say, hey man, hey, my name's Evan. You're with Tommy. He's my favorite salesperson. Man, he is literally the best. If there's any questions that he can't answer for you, please let me know. I'll be helping work your deal. My name's Evan. I'm the general manager. I've been here for 12 years. Thank you so much. Can I get you some water coffee? Good. Look, man, you're in our house. I insist on getting you something. I don't care if I got to get you an empty cup. If you're in my house and you're at home and me and my wife are there, she's going to make sure you got something. It's just how we do. Can I get you some water or coffee? What can I get you? What can I get the kids? Oh, I brought a little coloring book for your kids. You know, I brought some little cars for your kids to use, right? Can you give some reciprocity when you go in on a manager turn early on? Can you do that? Can you put yourself in a tactical state where you look like, man, this guy's amazing? But what do you look like? Like, do you look like you're like, like just, uh, and you're just like, hey, I'm, I'm Kevin. I'm here to, you know, I'm a manager. It's like, no, bro, I'm fired up, man. Welcome to my house. Look, we put on a show worth paying for around here. I'm not going to tell them that, but that's what I'm going to do. By the way, your salesperson's watching how you engage with them. Some of you guys, your reason why your salespeople don't want to come get you on a turn is because you're awkward and weird. Don't be awkward and weird about it. Be the leader that you once needed. Don't be scared to take over the deal if your, your salesperson's failing. Take over the deal. Work the deal. Show them how to do the deal from start to finish, even the damn delivery if you have to. Don't be scared to take that deal over. And then the last part is, is just work that system. Just continue to work it. Make sure you have a system. Like make sure you're identifying it. This is coming from a guy that sold a lot of cars. Was one of the top Nissan salespeople in the country between 2010 and 2020. Nobody sold more cars than me. I'm just telling you, I saw some really good people and some really bad people that did really, just didn't even like to sell cars to. There was also managers of the business that I all absolutely leaned on for so many things. Man, there were certain people that I'm like, you know, they gave really good meetings and it just got me excited. Okay, use this as a little, a little self-evaluation and get back to personal growth, get back to personal development, which leads me to joining our school community. There's a link down below. We train on leadership, we train on influence, we train on persuasion, we train you how to get your mindset into the best freaking most positive state that you've ever lived in. You're, you're around a community of people that are learning, growing, and they're leading their teams and their families to levels that you just never even ever even thought possible. Be in that community. Click the link below, like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Let's go. Woo! Come on.